What's going on guys? Welcome back again as always. Um, so for this video we need to do a little upfront uh, disclaimer. You're going to need a large quantity of your favorite beverage. This will not be a short video because there's a lot to say and anything worth saying is worth taking a long time to say. If you're looking for a two-minute infomercial, turn it off now and move on elsewhere. Are we clear on that? Okay. And it doesn't bother me if you don't like long videos. I get it. Some people literally don't have time to watch a long video. That's cool. I'm just saying, don't fill up the comment section with too long, yada, yada. I'm warning you ahead of time. You're going to need a beverage, and you're going to have to be interested in this topic, to sit through it. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for all that is coffee. This video is proudly brought to you by League of Pirates. I wish it was. I mean, it is, because he's a buddy of mine. He's a number one awesome dude. Um, currently, League of Pirates website's not up. I personally think that he needs to bring his web store and website back up so that you guys can go purchase such awesomeness as is this. But that's just me. I'm just saying. In case you can't tell, I'm trying to bug him and hint at him to get things back going again. He had some Things come up and some setbacks and uh, <clears throat> had to work on some stuff and I'm hoping that he gets it all worked out and can get his website back up. So, got my fingers crossed, brother, hoping you can get it all worked out. So, in that spirit, let's delve into this, guys. Packs and rucks and what are you going to use them for? So, I've kind of been hinting around at this for a long time. And again, this is going to take a few minutes to go through because there's, there's a lot to, to cover and to talk about. And everything I'm going to tell you is a combination of my own personal experience and usage, my personal plans and intentions, as well as the experiences, usages, and plans and intentions of some of my very closest, far more experienced friends. Um, packs are, are tools, like your weapon, everything else. And as with all of those, a universal do-it-all item very rarely does anything good, right? I've used the analogy before, a crescent wrench is never going to work as well as a properly sized uh, box wrench or socket, uh, etc. It'll work, but it won't work as good as one dedicated for whatever it is you're you know, trying to do. Packs are the same way. So, you got your gear. You've got your chest rig, your belt rig, whatever you choose to run to support your rifle. You've got your rifle. You gotta have a pack. That's just Hands down, virtually no exceptions. I won't say 100% no exceptions, but virtually no exceptions. You got to have a pack, some size or another. I want to go through some different scenarios and situations and kind of explain what I would use and a little bit of why. Hopefully, it'll get you thinking and you can kind of run your own situations and stuff because. Just because of what I use something for doesn't necessarily mean it's going to transfer over to you or what anybody else uses doesn't transfer over to you. You've got to set your stuff up for your situation and all the different variables that you personally have to take into account. Because we may have two completely different set of variables that will affect and influence what we're doing and how we're doing it, right? And don't ever let anybody tell you otherwise. Oh, sorry, guys. My allergies are going nuts and freaking allergy medicine ain't helping. <clears throat> so I apologize for the 
scratching and ugh, got my nose just about to jump off my face. So we're going to start at the, the lightest, smallest on the bottom and we'll work our way up, right? So <clears throat> this is my Crossfire DG1 assault pack. It's a really small pack. It does not hold a lot. It's not meant to hold a lot. This pack for me would basically hold water, maybe some first aid items, a few little sundry items, um, specific gear I may want, you know, small set of binoculars, monocular, um, whatever. I'm going to get the whole list of what all you'd pack because, again, what you'd pack be up for you. But think first aid, water, ammo, immediate support items, that sort of thing. Um, I've got mine set up that I, for that exact purpose. Um, I've got a three mag shingle mollied into the inside of the beaver tail here so that I've got extra ammo and reloads. I would fill it up with water and then other items that I would need. I would use this pack for a couple of different scenarios and situations. So first and foremost, if I had to do a really short patrol, a real short security patrol around my retreat property, um, my neighborhood, depending on how you're set up, you know, some of you might have a retreat property like, like we do. You might, your retreat might be your subdivision that, that you live in that, that y'all would you know, band together and you know secure, and that'd be great. So if you had to do a short patrol around that neighborhood, around your property or whatever, not something that you're planning on being out you know, overnight or anything like that. This would be the pack that I would grab and take. If I were manning a static security position, maybe for you know, two hours, four hours, six hours, just depends on you know, how long I'd be doing it. Um, again, might be at your retreat, might be around your neighborhood, whatever. For static guard duty, you would want a pack. It doesn't have to be a big one. It can be a small one like this little salt pack so that you've got, you know, a few little extra things with you. You might want some snacks. You're going to want water regardless. You're always going to want water, um, extra ammo, and then other little things you might need with you to help you do that patrol or security watch um, more effectively. Might be binoculars. Might be night vision. Might be, a you know, a raincoat or a poncho. Um, just little things like that that you want to have with you. You're not going to you know, be far away from your actual base operations, etc. <clears throat> Another situation that I would use this small pack for would be <clears throat> for a direct action assault. It's an assault pack. If there was a target that, for whatever reason, me and my friends, family, neighbors, whatever, had to go and offensively uh, engage, this would be a pack that I would take. I would want this with me, again, to carry all those same items. Water, first aid stuff, spare ammo, and you know, other small related equipment. So this is a very versatile pack that I can do a lot of things with, and it readily gets the job done. There are a lot of other similar size packs out there. Um, one of the things I like about this one is some of its size and features, but I also like that it's got the capability to be attached to something like a larger pack for other uses. We'll get into that coming up in just a minute, but keep that in mind. I can attach this to other bags. Moving up in size a little bit, the next size pack that I would use would be something along the lines of what is most commonly referred to as like a three-day pack. Now, I've mentioned this in other videos, most three-day packs that are sold and marketed as such are not three-day packs. The only way you're going to live three days out of it is if you're in a hotel room. Now, if that's, if that's your game plan, then okay, rock it out. But for everything else, most three-day packs aren't three-day packs. They're typically overnight bags 
at best. Okay. Now, something along those lines would be something like what you've seen me show before, my Tactical Tailor Modular Operator Pack, um, similar size bags to that, or this Direct Action Ghost Mark II Pack. <clears throat> this pack is one that I would use for a couple of different situations. <clears throat> Depending on the scenario and what I was doing, I could use this, again, manning a static security position on guard duty. It would let me have items with me that I might want to have depending on what the weather is going to be. I can have things like binoculars, night vision, etc. I have water. I can have some food and snacks. I can have extra ammo. Um, it might be, if you're in an area like I am, let's say I had to go pull an evening guard shift and it was 65 degrees when I'm starting the shift and by the time I get off it might be down in the 30s well this would let me be able to take some extra layers with me to put on as temperatures cooled off maybe the reverse I start out a morning shift and it's cold and then I'm bundled up and then before I get off, the temperature rises and I'm shedding layers. Well, this gives me something to put those in and keep track of them. It just gives you a way to carry things around to support what you're doing better. I would also use this as a patrol pack, be it for me personally around my retreat property, or you could use it if you've got a neighborhood system set up and you're you know, part of your neighborhood team protecting your neighborhood. If you're just going on a, on a you know, day-long patrol where you're expecting to be out for a while, you need to have water with you, medical supplies, ammo, all the other things. Um, this is a good size pack to take. Allows you to carry stuff without overly loading you down and burdening you and making you tote too much weight all day long. It gives you things that you want to have with you just in case. It would also one this size if there was a chance that you might get caught and have to be out overnight. You never know what may come up. It'll let you have extra things with you that would help you get through an overnight scenario if you were out. I mean, hypothetical scenario, you're out on security, you come up on somebody that's you know gotten too close to your property, you need to set up and watch them overnight, see what they're doing. You can have you know extra layers in there. Um, you could have something like a tarp or something to give you some shelter from the weather, um, maybe even just something as simple as you know, camouflaging layers to be able to set up and, and hide yourself while you're watching the, you know, the target that you're watching. Simple things like that. Doesn't have to be a big giant pack, but just something you know to, to handle what you'd be doing out on a day-long security patrol. Moving up the line. Let's say you needed to, again, thinking in the terms of you've got a neighborhood protection group set up, you've got a retreat property with your friends and family, whatever. Let's say, hypothetical scenario, one of your patrols has spotted somebody. They're getting real close to your place. You want to set up one and watch them and see what they're up to, see if they're somebody that is a possible threat or see if it's somebody that might be a potential friend but you, you got to figure that information out and gather that information you need to go out your, your security patrol finds them radios them in hey I, we found these people over here blah, blah blah we need to get somebody to set up on them so you have to send out basically the equivalent of a uh, old school lerp unit that's llrp long range reconnaissance patrol or the more recent term LRS, long range surveillance. You need to possibly be set up for a couple of days, maybe a couple of nights, watching people. You're not gonna be out you know, for two weeks, so you don't need an apartment complex on your back, but you need to be able to go out and, and do that. What I would use, and for general use like that, I would personally use this DG3 pack that I've showed y'all before. I can fit sleeping bag, shelter, camo layers, water, food, ammo, um, observation equipment. I can fit all that in here and comfortably carry it 
as far as I need to carry it and get set up. Um, I've got two external pouches added on here just from an external organization. It would work great. Me personally, another thing I would do, going back to what I mentioned at the start, my little assault pack. I would attach my assault pack to this, and that would be the loadout I would take with me. Ideally, you would have at least two people going to do that. You would find a spot where you would set up your overnight spot, and that's where you would drop your big ruck at. You would take the smaller assault pack off, and if you're taking shifts, the guy that's staying with the packs, getting some rest, and then you would move off and set up your surveillance spot because you don't want to do your surveillance from where you're sleeping at. You need to be two separate places on another video. I would undo my assault pack and take my assault pack with me while I was on surveillance. That way I would have that little bit of extra food, water, um, ammo, etc. just in case I somebody found me and I got into contact. But those two packs together work as a system and a team that will let you go out and do something like that for a, a, a couple of nights, a couple of days uh, away from your, your regular place of, you know, base of operations. Again, could be your house and then your neighborhood, could be, you know, your retreat property where you're living at, whatever. Again, that's all variables that you have to take into account for your personal situation. The next step up from that for me is going to be a really, really long range situation. And this would apply whether I'm in a vehicle or on foot. If I've got to be a long way away from my base of operations and my supplies, even if I'm traveling away from it by, by vehicle, I would still take this pack with me and equip it so that if I had to walk that distance back that we drove away, I would be capable of doing it. Because you can drive far enough in a vehicle in 15 minutes that it could take you two or three days to walk back, especially in the kind of times and scenarios and situations that, that we're you know, taking into account and talking about here. So the next pack up for me that I would use for a really long range, I'm away from the base type thing, that's where my big DG-16 comes into place. And I'm going to have this external pouch on the back of it. I'll add a couple of extra side pouches to it, which I've still got to get. I'm still setting that one up because it's taken over from my previous long range pack that I had. And I would incorporate, again, the small little assault pack with that so that if I had to dump that big pack, I still got that little assault pack with, again, those, those immediate necessities of some medical stuff, ammo, water, maybe a little bit of food, you know, snacks, whatever. Try to make your stuff work as a system together. Now that's those, those four packs right there, for me personally, can cover really 90 plus, 95 plus percent of everything that I would be envisioning and coming up with doing. In some way or another, I could make those you know work together and do what I need to do. I already know they all work with my gear setups that I've got. They work with my weapons. They, they, it, it, it all functions together. I've tried it, used it. I know it works. Um, now, I know that that seems like a daunting thing, and suddenly you're like, oh my gosh, I can afford all those packs like that. I'm just starting out or whatever. I get it. I understand it. And I'm not saying you got to. I'm not saying that, that that's a prerequisite or that, you know, oh, you have to do this. Nope. I'm just telling you some areas that I would use them for so that you can kind of think, okay, let, let's say you are somebody who's just started out getting your gear and your weapon and you're trying to get trained and equipped and set up. Think of the most likely scenarios that you would find yourself in and be having to do and then pick the one that would best fit those scenarios. That's what you get first. The others you add later as you can. I've been doing this for a long time and I've went through different evolutions of stuff and this is kind of where I'm finally after all these years settling at. And by all these years, I literally mean 30 plus years. 
Um, for most people, I would say you could probably get away with, depending on your situation, either the three-day type pack or like something along the sizes of that, that DG3 pack that I showed you. One of those two in that ballpark would honestly be a good, good place to start out. Now, if you've got like, man, you've got the super organized subdivision, um, y'all can turn that place into, you know, freaking Fort Knox if something happens. And the most you'll ever be doing is static guard duty or perimeter security patrols. And heck, maybe all you need is just a little assault pack. That, that might be perfect for you. Maybe just a little three-day size pack may be perfect for you. That's why I say I can't tell you what you should get for your scenarios. Only you can determine that. Nobody else can tell you, and I mean nobody. Myself and other people, we can give you suggestions based on the criteria that you might provide us. But even then, you still ultimately have to figure out and make the determination of what's going to fit best for you, for the scenarios, for your budget, for everything else. You don't have to get even these exact same packs. These are just my choices. The bottom line is you do have to have a pack of some kind. If you expect to operate as an armed, prepared citizen to protect your friends, family, home, retreat, property, neighborhood, whatever. You will need a pack of some kind. A pack lets you carry weight. As humans, we are anatomically designed to carry weight primarily on our shoulders and back and then hips. It's why I'm such a big advocate of my gear and other gear like my gear that I make from other companies of keeping your fighting load out fairly simple and compact. You want to carry the bulk of your weight in a pack. That means I don't have to have 8, 10, 12 magazines from a rifle on my chest rig. I can have four mags on my chest rig and have the other four or six mags in my pack. And contrary to what a lot of uh, the uh, Cool Kid Club will tell you, you'll do a lot of your fighting out of your pack, not necessarily off your chest rig, um, if you're doing it properly. And that takes a little bit more education and training, which is why you've got to get trained, and you've got to get trained by applicable people teaching applicable things for what we're trying to do. That doesn't mean people teaching things that aren't applicable or bad teachers, or it's not good training. It could be great instructors and great training, just not necessarily applicable to what we're trying to do. So take all that into consideration. Um, you'll notice I'm not going to get real detailed and give you a list of everything I'm putting in my packs and, and show you, hey, this is my pack, and here's everything I've got in it. I'm not going to do that. Because everything that I put in it is specifically for my situation. I'm taking into account the weather and time of year of where I'm personally at, the terrain that I'll be in where I'm personally at, the personnel and people that I'll have with me where I'm at, the other equipment and items that I will have available to me and in play where I'm at, and all those other things. It's all very, very, very specific to me and where I'm at. And it does me no good. It does you no good for me to give you that big detailed list and, and show you everything because you've got to come up with what's going to be for your area. If you're halfway across the country, your list might need to be completely different than mine. And I think far too often... Somebody in the arid Midwest watching a video of how somebody has their ruck packed in the southeastern United States and then will turn around and try to mimic that for their pack is doing themselves a great disservice because 
just the climate and terrain alone are so different, they will necessitate very different things being packed and utilized. So all that other stuff has to be taken in consideration as well. So that's why I didn't get into that. I just wanted to give you guys some ideas and scenarios of be thinking about those situations that you'd be doing, what you have available to you, and then what pack or packs you would want for those different situations. Um, if you're somebody that all you've got is the big, giant, huge monstrosity ruck, you know, the as the popular terminology is, the inch bag, I-N-C-H, I'm never coming home bag. If that's the only pack you've got, but you find yourself having to pull guard duty somewhere or just doing a little day patrol, that's going to be completely the wrong pack to try to do either one of those with. You're not going to want to tote it around. And what's going to end up happening is you won't tote it around. You'll leave it and go do what you got to do without it and then find yourself shortchanged either way because you're not going to have it, not going to have extra things with you that you need, or you will have it with you and it'll be so big and cumbersome and bulky that it'll, it'll hinder and affect what you're doing and potentially even be a liability to you. So you got to take all that into thought, guys. And that's really kind of where I wanted to get with this and what I wanted you thinking on. Don't, don't get wrapped around you know, the axle with it. Um, don't think you've got to have a bunch of fancy gee golly whiz bang things on packs either packs can be real simple they, they need to be real simple right like for example oh if I can reach it way down there there's a lot of distance between me and the ground that sucks about being tall so my little DG3 I mean DG1 my assault pack there are a number of other companies that make very, very, very similar packs to this. Uh, almost identical, or I, I guess you should say theirs is almost identical to the other companies, right? But what I like about theirs is the simplicity. So, for example, this front pocket, I've got another company's pack like this, and I don't have it with me. Darn it, I should have had it out so I could show you. So this front pouch is just a big pouch. There's nothing in it. Some other brands will have 1,500 little different, you know, doodad organizational things in there and pin slots and all this other crazy stuff that takes up space, adds weight, and doesn't do anything for me. Like nothing that I need to use ever fits in any of those places. I would just rather have a big empty pouch that I can put my stuff into and get it like I want it. Um, like, for example, same thing here. The inside pouch right here on the, the inside of the beaver tail, it's just a pouch. There's, there's nothing else in there. There's no little tab slots organization. The main pouch on here, there's, there's nothing in there. It's just, it's just a pouch. I like that kind of simplicity. Now, again, you may be different. Your situation may be such that you can utilize all of that different organization and you want it. Knock yourself out. Get the pack that works and fits for you. That's all I'm saying. I like the stupid simplicity of this one. My other packs are the same way. Big pockets, big pouches, not a whole lot of organization. That's me, not you, me. I'm just showing you what I'm using in case maybe your situation is similar to mine. That's all, nothing else. I'm not gonna tell you that that's the ones you have to have. I know that sounds like a broken record, but I wanna get that through to everybody. You guys that are experienced at this, you folks that may be new to it, I want both of you to, to, to always have that in the back of your head. You have to do you. Whether you're watching my videos, anybody else's videos, whoever, you do what works for you. Be honest and realistic with yourself. That's the key. Be honest and realistic, but do you. Okay? 
Um, trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to ramble on about is, I mean, I know we could talk about PAX ad nauseum, but bottom line, it's a way for you to carry stuff and not have it in your hands. And you can carry more in a pack than you can carry in your hands. Leaves your hands free to do other things that you need to do. Right? So, I hope that helps you guys out. Um, mainly, I hope it gives you some food for thought. Something to think about. Get your brains going. That's war game stuff in your head. Scenarioized stuff in your head. Come up with fictional scenarios and put yourself in it mentally and say, okay, if I'm here, this is the scenario, this is what I've got going on, this is who I've got around, what items would I realistically want to have with me, right? And then go from there. That's it. Um, all right, that's a half hour's worth. That's probably bored some of you to tears, but that's okay. It's like a hill. You'll get over it. You guys go uh, refill your cups. As I'm about to do. And uh, get out there and get after it. Once you get that pack. Load it up with the stuff in it that you're going to use. And get out there and do it. Find a place where you can go for a walk with it. Now. I promise I'll close with this. You may not be able to load up with everything. Like you might not live in an area that's conducive to you walking around with your rifle and gear and everything on. But I would imagine that there's probably everybody can find a place where they can load up a pack and go for a walk with it loaded up with the stuff in it that you're going to use and even if you're just wearing a pair of jeans and a t-shirt, get away with anybody asking questions. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm getting ready to go on a big hiking trip and I'm testing out my load and breaking in my pack a little bit, making sure everything's riding right, getting it adjusted, getting used to walking with it, acclimating to having the pack on. Come on. There's, I can't think of a place that, if you live in a place where that would actually end up being a problem after you gave that explanation, then I seriously question why you're still there. I mean, honestly. And I don't say that often because I'm not one to tell people you need to pack up and move from where you're at. That'd be a case that would really have me considering packing up and moving. If I can't load up a backpack and go for a walk and just had the explanation I'm going on a hiking trip coming up and I'm trying to break it in. If that's not acceptable to people, yeah, that's not a place I want to be. All right. Get out of here, guys. Take care. Go do it. I'll see you later. Tick tock.